What's up, everybody? Welcome. Obviously, I'm Josh. I'm Aaron. This is Aaron. And we're introducing Joe from the Mommy Valley Whiskey Society. And we're here to talk about our next pick that's coming up. This will be coming out very soon. And it's going to release to our Patreon community and the Mommy Valley Whiskey Society. And yeah, we're excited to get into this. One of the biggest reasons we're excited to get into this, other than the fact that it's just fantastic bourbon, is the fact that this is a label that not a lot of people know about, mm -hmm. right? So the Nash Tucky label, this beautiful black or dark gray and kind of like faded black almost, but dark gray and gold labeling is just a variation of Nashville Barrel Company. And this is the way that they label their Kentucky source bourbons. So that was actually a Kentucky source bourbon as well that we put the Nashville Barrel Company label on, but we wanted to release this one under their Nash Tucky label. And it's a fantastic pick. We're yeah. going to roll through it, nose it, taste it, tell you guys about it. And we'll also talk about the process a little bit while we get into this. But it was a ton of fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Nashville Barrel Company, if you ever get the opportunity to do a pick there, or if you're just in the Nashville area and you can visit there, absolutely go by yeah. and do that They're for cool. sure. And yeah. this is a fun collaboration because it's with the Stuff and Whiskey Channel, the Mommy Valley Whiskey Society, under our S&W MVP pick label yep flash the um, logo up somewhere yeah, on the screen right now yeah here. we'll put it wherever um, it'll fit <laughs> and it's and it's great because you guys have some of your patreons on the pick we have some of our whiskey society members on the pick uh so it's new people meeting each other and yeah. having a really good time it was fun. yeah it was a ton of fun and i'll just kind of as we're kind of nosing and tasting okay. I'll, I'll give just a brief overview of how the pick went so we had four samples and the first sample was had a tremendous finish but the flavor profile was just a little too nutty and bitter. It just wasn't going to stand up for what we wanted. The second sample was weak sauce. Let's just be honest. Like, oh, it, yeah. it was fine. It was very good, but it's like a super easy sipper. Yeah. The, I mean, there's nothing that National Barrel Company does that's not good. Right. Yeah. Right. But it's just, it's just comparatively speaking, it just could yeah. not stand up to samples three and four. And three was wild. It was a wild ride. This was sample four. But sample three, I was lobbying hard for it because <laughs> at first I thought I hated it. On the nose, it smelled like straight up funk, like cheese funk. Right. But it had a lot of complexity on the palate, but we went back and forth on it. You actually, Erin operates fast. So she I just do. rolled right through the whole flight <laughs> and she just was like, do, 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 do. Uh, fir first glass is third, second glass is last, third glass is second, and the fourth glass is the easy winner. Yeah. She was through those when we're still, on still on glass. everybody else was on glass right. one. Yeah. And then, I, ha I have to do it because if I wait too long in between pours, I will forget what I just drank and it, it will do no one any good. So yeah. I have to go like straight through. And then one of the funny things is that as we went around the table, we had eight people on the pick and six or six of the eight, six of the eight were on board with glass four. four. But, but myself and one other person were holding out for glass three because it was just so complex and odd and everything it and, was delicious but it was very it, good it, it was good um it was it was a little overpowering it was it was yeah. a it was a lot it was yeah. a lot it was a it lot was a it's lot. like when it you was meet, a little extra it's like when you meet somebody and you're like man they're awesome but, but like, they're, a they're a lot like i can't <laughs> spend get, a ton get, of time you with get them. worn out real <laughs> yeah. quick that yeah. was what it's, it was honestly it's probably like hanging out with me but <laughs> <laughs> you guys are here watching this so hopefully you know you might have enjoyed that barrel as well <laughs> but Anyways, what ended up happening was I was like, all right, guys, I'm so torn because these are both so good. I need you to blind me on them. And then, like, I needed to get on board with it. And totally blind, I picked this one as well. Mm -hmm. So, and then we did it with the other person. And then they and did hold out. They, on they, they did hold out. Um, but he, he was like, I, I can see, like, this one being, like, right. the crowd favorite. And he's like, I like three personally, but I also yeah. like four a lot. Now, he said that. Yeah, you know, like Josh says, don't hear what I'm not saying. Right. Th this still has plenty of power to it. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. We're about to like get into it. We're going to tell report, you about it. This yeah. doesn't hold back. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at a five-year Kentucky sourced bourbon, 126.34 proof. Kentucky sourced. Kentucky from, sourced Kentucky from sourced. Nashville Barrel Company. So this is part of a run of barrels that is somewhat legendary in the Nashville market, and. I'm just not that secondary matters because none of us really care about that, but it's wild. Like some of these bottles in these 1500 series runs from source from Kentucky, they like people go nuts for them here in Nashville. I don't know what it's like outside of Nashville because yeah. we live here, but I mean, literally people collect 
all the 1500 series running. I didn't so know the that. yeah, so the fact that we got our hands on a 1500 series yeah. Kentucky Source barrel for our own pick, for our own pick is not just get a bottle. Like, is yeah, yeah, it's yeah. This barrel's ours. Yeah. So let's get into the nose on this. I mean, just the color in and of itself yeah. is like this beautiful, oh, crazy, yeah. like dark copper color. It looks awesome. Yeah, I'm getting like. Awesome. Walking through a pear field that was in the woods. I don't even pears grow on trees. I know that. <laughs> I know that. A pear field. But a I, field of pear trees. Yeah. A field of pear trees, but it's also in the woods. Yeah. Okay. And there is some of that lighter fruitness, but I like in during the pick too, picking up a lot of like dark berry jam fruit notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like laying on top of really sugary oak, because yeah. it has an oak element for a five year old. It has yeah. an oak element that rivals 10 year old birds. I think that's oh, yeah. where the sugary oak is where I'm getting pears in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. It has this thing on it and I'm getting it right now. And actually this is the first time sipping it by itself out of a glen on the pick. We were comparing it in a lineup, mm. uh, done some head to heads with it. We did share quite a lot at whiskey weekend. Yes, as you can see. We've yeah, we've been doing some damage, but this on the nose right now has this concentrated like white, table sugar sweetness about it that I just can't get away from. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it smells so good because the way it combines with the fruitiness, it just makes like for this super concentrated fruity sweetness that's anchored by the wood right. that's in it. Mm -hmm. Right. And along with some, some dark fruit notes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. and brown sugar. Like you yeah. get, I can see the, the white table sugar on the nose and then you get on the palate. And it's just, there's a lot more depth to it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. The yeah. The white sugar on the nose, to me, there is a brown sugar too, that kind of like, it's weird. The white sugar combines with the fruit on the nose and then the brown sugar combines with the oak on the nose. All right. And it fuses together. So let's talk about the taste. Have you guys been drinking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Y'all yeah. talk about that. Good. I'm going to get a sip. Go ahead, Joe. The, it's, yeah, that all of that from the nose carries forward yeah. on the palate, um, provides this amazing kind of gentle slow long build that bloom of the proof mm -hmm. yeah. into the finish and the finish lasts i think that's time. the thing that we noticed on the pick too was that this one was the one that had aside from one had like right. one of the longest finishes yeah. yeah yeah and and what's nice is for those like higher proof really punchy whiskey lovers it builds to that but somebody who might like a little more moderate bourbon it gets there slowly, mm -hmm. right? Like slower. takes you on a gentle ride all the way to the top of the mountain, but it gets there and it's, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It delivers. I agree. One of the things that I'm getting about this, other than the fact that this is insane for five year whiskey, the fact that the, the barrel char and the oak are coming through the way that they are with like a, just a beautiful uh, barrel char note. And then the oak coming through just as sweet as it is. It's slightly drying. Like, ever so slightly in a good way to me. Yeah, just on the back end, the way a high proof, on the, back, the way yeah. like a good strong high yeah. proof bourbon will be. I mean, 126 proof is no joke. Yeah. But what it reminds me of, so I don't know why, but like I drank a lot of ices as a kid. <laughs> so it reminds me Which of- Which color? Well, what I would do is get the cherry and the cola and combine them. Oh yeah. And oh, what, so you the cherry and the cola, not the cherry and the, the blue one. Who combines the blue and the red? <laughs> you a, always combine- A the, lot of people. Really? The okay. cups are blue and red. I'm on board with you on You the... combine the cherry and the... Anyways, this... Com... <laughs> this not the blue. Not the, the red. Blue. The blue no. exists as it's... The blue is, the blue is on its own. Stuff. Yeah. But this reminds me of the cherry flavor of the icy on the front of the palate. And then as it shifts gears into the back of the palate, yeah. it reminds me more of the cola icy. Right. But like this cherry cola icy thing going oh, on I here, I'm really enjoying quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So I mean, my criteria... I. I said this when we talked about it before, is this drinks like a special pour, mm -hmm. right? Like again, similar theme to your guys' channel, you know, fighting the hype, fighting the FOMO. This is what a special pour of whiskey should drink like to me. And there's criteria, yeah. right? It should, it should have a complex nose mm -hmm. and flavor. Um, it should have that just right amount of proof point, not, not hot just for the sake of being hot, but that slow build into that nice, strong mm -hmm. Kentucky hug, right? Yeah. Um, and then it should have that those oak notes, mm -hmm. and then the consistency, the mouthfeel should be there. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be thin like you're drinking water. Yeah. Yeah. And this hits every single one of those. Yeah, I think for me, when I think special bourbon, I think concentration of flavors. 
That's my favorite thing. That's the biggest thing that I notice between special bottles or special picks and mm -hmm. just regular mm -hmm. shelf stuff. There is, is a there's concentration like this pure here. concentration. And this thing it has it has such a sugary concentration of flavors. So look, I want to hold on. I want to say I want to caveat this. You keep talking about how sweet it is and how sugary it is. No, the oak concentration. It too. is not sickeningly sweet. No, because yeah, I yeah. do not like sickeningly sweet whiskey. That's right. why I typically tend to like rye more than bourbons. Yeah. And it, it's a sweetness that is not overpowering where I I said, like, it was my front runner from the get-go while they were still picking up, like, smelling and nosing yeah. <laughs> number one. I put it as first because it was sweet without being too sweet. Right. So that, that was my criteria. There, right. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it has that, yeah. that perfect balance yeah. that yeah. you want. Huge fan of this pick. We think you guys are going to love it. It's going to go out to the Patreon communities first, the Mommy Valley Whiskey Society and the Stuff and Whiskey Patreon communities. So if you're interested in it, you need to be on board with one of those mm -hmm. and it'll just go in tiered order. And if there are any left, we still don't even know the bottle yield yet, but we're going to get all that information before this video goes out. It'll be in the description below. Make sure you check that. And yeah, I mean, I think whoever gets this pick is going to be fantastically happy oh, yeah. these are my favorite types of bottles just as a customer of nashville barrel to be able to get my hands mm -hmm. on because it highlights how good yeah five six seven year bourbon can be mm -hmm. and yeah i mean it's, yeah. this is a fantastic bottle so right. if you want on board with it get on board with it joe you got anything else no that sums it up i'm super excited to get it out to everybody absolutely people are gonna love it yeah cheers bye cheers <laughs>